to Zipek Productions, and today we will discuss the captivating world of Chinese manufacturing. Ever wondered why almost everything seems to be made in China? Well, it's not just about cheap labor. There's way more to the story. Imagine a bustling business ecosystem where innovation meets efficiency, coupled with a pinch of relaxed regulatory compliance. Add in some low taxes and a sprinkle of competitive currency practices. Voila, you've got China, the unrivaled world's factory. Here's the first thing on our list. Let's have a chat about those lower wages. Get ready to explore what's happening in the pay department. Can you believe it? China is home to a whopping 1.41 billion people, make it the absolute heavyweight champion in terms of population. Now, you know how supply and demand work, right? Well, with such a massive workforce in China, there's definitely an oversupply of low-wage workers, which kind of keeps those wages on the lower side. It's fascinating to learn that until the late 20th century, most Chinese folks were living the rural life or dealing with lower middle-class struggles. But boy, did things change. Internal migration totally shook things up, turning the rural-urban balance upside down. People from all over started pouring into the industrial cities, and they were ready to work their socks off for some not-so-great pay. Grit and determination, I tell ya. Now, here's the kicker. Unlike many Western countries, China doesn't play strictly by the rules when it comes to child labor or minimum wages. But hey, don't get all worried just yet. There's some good news on the horizon. Many provinces are now stepping up their game and raising those minimum wages, you know, to keep up with the rising cost of living. Take Guangdong, for example, the big economic short collar of China. In 2021, they cranked up their minimum wage by nearly 10% and folks were getting up to 2,360 yuan per month. That's in progress right there. Fast forward to 2022, and guess who's leading the wage race? Shanghai, baby! They've got the highest hourly minimum wage out of all 31 provinces, a sweet 2,590 RMB per month. But wait, Beijing isn't far behind. They've got the highest hourly minimum wage, rocking it at 25.3 RMB per hour. All these hardworking people in China form a colossal labor pool that can churn out goods like there's no tomorrow. They can handle seasonal demands like pros, and if the market goes crazy, they'll rise to the challenge like champions. China's got some serious work ethic going on. Well, it's time now to check out what's going on in the business ecosystem over there. Let's dive in and see what's cooking. So when it comes to industrial production in China, it's like this building an interconnected web of awesomeness. It's not just one company doing everything on its own, but this whole ecosystem of players coming together in a dance of competition and cooperation. Let's zoom in on Shenzhen, the city that's right next to Hong Kong in the southeast. This place is an absolute hotspot for the electronics industry. Over the years, they've built this fantastic support system to keep everything running smoothly. They've got suppliers of components, a skilled technical workforce, assembly suppliers, and a bunch of hardworking low-cost workers, all making the magic happen. And guess what? Big shots like Apple Inc. are all over this. They know how to play the game, taking full advantage of China's supply chain wizardry to keep their costs low and their profits soaring high. Just look at Foxconn Technology Group, a Taiwan-based electronics manufacturer. They're all over the place with suppliers and manufacturers nearby, making the production process a well-oiled machine. You see, for many companies, it's just not practical to take all those components to the US and assemble everything there. It's like putting together a giant jigsaw puzzle, and China's got all the right pieces to make it work seamlessly. Getting to the harsh truth, the lower compliance. Yeah, it's not the brightest side of the story, but we gotta talk about it. Buckle up. Okay, let me give you the lowdown of this compliance situation. So, in the West, manufacturers have to play by the rules. You know, the basic stuff like no child labor, fair wages, safe working conditions, and being kind to the environment. It's like a big rule book they gotta follow. But over in China, it's a different story. Some of their factories have been notorious for not playing nice with those guidelines. Child labor, long hours, and no compensation insurance. Yeah, it's been a bit of a wild ride. Some factories even had this sneaky trick where they only pay their workers once a year. Can you believe it? It's like a strategy to keep the workers from quitting mid-year. Talk about a tough situation. Now, of course, people have raised their eyebrows and pointed fingers at these practices, and the Chinese government said they'd make some changes. They promised reforms to protect workers' rights and ensure fair compensation. But here's a catch. Making those changes stick has been a real slow process. 
Compliance in many industries is still pretty low, and not much has really changed. And you know what else? Environmental protection laws are often tossed out the window too. Chinese factories sometimes cut corners and ignore waste management costs. It's like they are taking shortcuts and not caring about the impact on the environment. And let's talk taxes and duties now, the secret sauce behind China's export game. Well, back in 1985, China came up with this brilliant export tax rebate policy. It's like their way of giving a big thumbs up to their exports and making them super competitive on the global stage. Here's the deal. When goods get exported from China, they don't have to deal with double taxation. And that's a major win for businesses. They enjoy a sweet 0% value added tax or a VAT treatment. It's like getting a tax exemption or a rebate all in one package. And that's not all. When those consumer products come back to China's shores, they're like VIPs, totally exempt from import taxes. It's like they get their red carpet treatment. You know what's even cooler? These lower tax rates make production costs stay low, making China a magnet for investors and companies who want to whip up some budget-friendly goods. You see, how this tax magic keeps China's export game going strong and attracting global players to their economic playground. And here, we should not forget the ongoing trade tussle between China and the US. It's been quite the roller coaster ride. Back in July 2018, the US decided to drop some tariffs on 818 Chinese products worth a cool $34 billion. That was just the start of a whole tariff war, with both sides slapping taxes on each other's goods. The numbers got pretty crazy. The US ended up imposing $550 billion in tariffs on Chinese goods, while China fired back with $185 billion in US products by February 2020. But hey, things started to shift when President Biden took the reins. China's foreign minister wanted those tariffs gone, and there have been ongoing talks about easing the tensions. With inflation concerns causing headaches in the US throughout 2022, President Biden and Treasury Secretary Janet Yellen hinted that easing tariffs with China might help ease some domestic inflation worries. As a result, we've seen some recent tariff exclusions for Chinese goods after a fresh round of negotiations in June 2023. Time to eye the Chinese currency, the master game changer for China. So China has been occasionally accused of playing tricks with the value of the yuan to give its exports an upper hand against US competition. But how do they do it? Well, they keep a tight leash on the yuan's appreciation by buying up dollars and selling off yuan. Sneaky, right? Back in 2005, the yuan was estimated to be undervalued by a whopping 30% compared to the dollar. That's quite the advantage in the export game. Now let's fast forward a bit. In 2017, the yuan actually got a boost, appreciating 8% against the dollar. Some say this was in response to former President Trump's threats to call China a currency manipulator. But as you know, things can change quickly, and by June 2018, when the US dropped those tariffs on Chinese goods, the yuan lost its shine and started weakening against the dollar. Just when you thought the roller coaster was over, it wasn't. In 2019, China's central bank decided to lower the yuan to 7.0205 per dollar, the weakest it had been since April 2008. And during the COVID-19 pandemic, the yuan continued to lose ground to the US dollar. By the end of 2021, the exchange rate was at 6.36 CNY to USD, with the average rate throughout the year being 6.4529 CNY to USD. It's like a wild dance between the yuan and the dollar, and we're all just trying to keep up. However, some experts have been wondering if other emerging economies with cheap labor might steal China's thunder. But hold on, there's more to the story. Sure, cheap labor is a big deal but it's not the only card up China's sleeve. The Made in China label is everywhere for a reason. It's not just about low costs, it's a whole package deal. Just think about it. China's got a huge labor pool like an army of skilled workers ready to take on any challenge. And let's not forget about the massive talent base they've built up over the years. It's like a treasure trove of expertise. But wait, there's more. China's business ecosystem is like a well-oiled machine, with suppliers, manufacturers, distributors, and customers all working together in harmony. It's like a symphony production. Obviously, other emerging economies might try to compete, but it's no easy task. It takes more than just low labor costs to match China's powerhouse status. China's got that magic mix of low production costs, a massive labor force, a talented bunch of minds, and an ecosystem that's hard to beat. 
So for now, and in the foreseeable future, China takes the global crown in manufacturing, pumping out products that find their way into the hands of consumers all around the globe. Well, there you have it. So, what's your take on China being the manufacturing king? Join the conversation and share your thoughts and experiences in the comments below. Well, thanks for watching Zipek Productions, and we'll see you in the next one.